Okay, we're starting to go here, and I've got to go live on uh, Facebook. There we go. And are we live on Facebook? It's not going. Huh. Let me see here. Let me try this again, see if it works. If it doesn't, okay, hold on a second. I will uh, do this and get rid of that. And then what I would do is I would, uh, I've got to um, uh, bring this more, do this, do this live on Facebook. Then I got to put in all this stuff here. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. And there we go go uh sorry folks sometimes this happens if i if i do this too early and now it should work okay there we go okay we're, we're up and out there on on uh on uh, uh facebook <laughs> yeah no what happens is if i if i set this thing up too early it then goes crazy okay and doesn't work so sometimes I just have to do it at the last minute. And today I did it 10 minutes ahead of time to see if it would screw up on me. And it screwed up on me. So, But we're now up and running. We're recording and we're uh, live on Facebook. And uh, let me now start to bring in, boy, a lot of them today. Here they come, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Marjorie Miller. We've got uh, um, our uh, old uh, friend up in Canada. Uh, there uh, and, uh everybody's coming up so fast uh, uh hello uh, charlene and hello to charlie and hello to uh of course edward Berger. hello that's right that's right <laughs> oh and of course uh, uh 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 our good friend andrew deutsch len lafrisco paul <laughs> levin brian where are you yeah i know i know hold on <laughs> <laughs> you got here, you know. You know, we never have this trouble with Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> On today, oh, I dare her to call. That's what she says when I don't call. Yeah. Happy <laughs> Monday, everyone! Happy, happy, happy Monday, Monday to you too. Yeah. Uh, have, have happy. What is this? Uh, this is my ice drink, and this is my coffee. Okay, <laughs> and this is my cocaine down here. You can't see it. <laughs> And this is my wine. There you go. Huh? <laughs> wine. And that's your wine. Here's what are you wine. what are you whining about? What? What's she whining about? Is is, <laughs> is is our is our friend up in Canada at a, a gym? Is that what you're at? Airport. It's like an airport. Oh, you're in an airport. Yeah. I'm in uh, lovely Montreal right now. Uh, you see, that's how it's pronounced, by the way, folks. He's doing it correctly. It's Montreal, right? <laughs> Unless you're French Canadian, it's Montreal. Oh, really? But Montreal. Montreal, yes. Is not the way to pronounce it. Montreal. Montreal. And you know, Montreal. You, you know when I learned ah. that? I learned that when I was at the Montreal Comedy Festival years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and guess who else is here? There's your favorite yeah, Brian. You Brian, go. it's Mandy. <laughs> hi, <laughs> Say hi, Ma hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. I know it's I know, I know it's basically sexual tension there. I oh, jeez. <laughs> Don't be doing that now. Come all on. Right. I'm trying to help my friend out. I help her with all her Match.com pictures and all this. <laughs> I give her valuable input. Do you really? <laughs> Tell us about that. She'll post a goofy picture of her with their tongue out or something with her friends. And then I, I, I you know, I uh, crop it properly. And I said, this will be great. And she already knows what I'm saying. I don't even have to say for Match or anything. She already knows. Yeah, exactly. How's so Match? How's Match.com done for you? Um, I had a couple of um, nice relationships, very short lived. I haven't been on it in a while. Yeah, I did. What did I do? I did. I did. I did. Um, I think did. I, did, I think I did Match.com as one of mine. Yeah. And then I, the one I met Marjorie on, I actually <laughs> met Marjorie on. Uh, J date. Yeah. You know, uh, I've got a 16 year relationship on match.com. Wow. Really? Is that yep. your Arizona? The Arizona? No, that was here in Austin. Oh. <laughs> let's, let's explain the 16 year relationship. He got the girl pregnant and now he has her <laughs> child. <laughs> 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 Dating sites. <laughs> 
So what are you waiting for? I'm waiting for a plane to go to where now. Wait, hold on. Who's who's this, Mandy? Yeah, who's that? Ah, I would just come to see what the liberals are plotting. (laughs) (laughs) You mean the you mean the true patriots? We don't talk about politics here, actually. No, not on this one. Yeah, call call back. Uh, (laughs) I don't know if he wants to do that. (laughs) You mean on the night show? Yeah, on the night show. Oh, you might have some fun on the night show. Uh, You can. You and Phil can hang out then. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) call our night show if you want to argue politics. Is that your boss, Andy? Um. Red, Red Fox used to say that boss is double SOB backwards. So, <laughs> bye. 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 My boss. Is that your boss, boss or, or is that a, a work? That's not my boss. That's no. not your boss. No. Okay. That's my that's my work boyfriend. Oh, oh my. your work boyfriend. Hey, I'm gone yeah. now. Screw this. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Met him on farmersonly.com. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's only.com. No, he's, but he's, he seems to be a, a right winger, right? He's not really a right winger. He's, uh, he, he fancies himself maybe a little bit libertarian. Okay. That's, that's, uh, he's, he's independent. Yeah. Okay. All he right. doesn't like Trump. That's the most important thing. Well, that's the most important thing. You know, yeah. I don't mind if you're a Republican as long as you're not a Trump. I don't Republican. mind if you're a Republican. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I, we don't talk politics much here, but, you know, I well, I don't even consider uh, Trump a Republican. No. You know, he, he's a self-serving son of a bitch. That's mm-hmm. all. You know, I, uh, a fascist. An SOB. <laughs> yeah. SSSOB. Can I just point this out quickly while yeah. I've got y'all's attention? Let me switch yeah. over. How do you switch over your camera? How do you, How do you switch me to the front? You know, so that you can yeah. oh, we can see the front. I don't, we, I don't know how to do it. I'll just do this. Jiggle, jiggle the handle. What no you <laughs> no, what are you trying? What are you trying to do? The oh the balloon. Up, up on the screen and then it should pop up. Oh, there you go. Is it your birthday today? Today is my 10-year anniversary. Wow. Um, at this organization. I was in another job for a while. I didn't know we ever got married. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my anniversary of my company. Oh, Ten- wow. That's oh cool. you were working since you're 14? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to show that since they got me flowers and balloons. I thought that was nice. Yeah. So nice. Congratulations. I had a yeah. girlfriend who was celebrating, like, I think it was her 21st birthday or something. Yes, I dated you. <laughs> and and oh, I went out and I got her four, di- three different birthday cards, all with different ages on them. And she said, why are they all different ages? And I said, add them up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. But anyway. So uh, how, how, how was your, how was your trip to Montreal? Was your plane flight okay? Was it, you know? Yeah, it was. Um. I I have very little sleep the last four days, so I literally closed my eyes. I didn't even see the city, the New York City skyline below me. I closed mm. my eyes and I opened them when we were landing. Yeah, yeah. So you, uh, yeah. Well, um, the best flights. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, the best flights. Uh, so uh, how's everything uh, with you, Paula? I'm good. I'm recovering from my my uh, knee surgery very nicely. Thank you. Yes. Uh, are you able to walk uh, without I being? Am, I'm able to walk. I can't dance yet, but I'm getting there. Unassisted? <laughs> hmm? Unassisted? Oh, yes. Means... Uh, yeah, it's unassisted by all means. I mean, you don't need a, c- a c- crutch or anything like that or a walker or whatever. At this uh, for, for, for a distance, I'll take a, a I have a a cane. A cane. Okay. Yeah, but uh, uh, for for just getting around my little, you know, yeah. condo here, I'm I'm good. Yeah. Could we Thank send you. you a Sherpa? A Sherpa. <laughs> 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 I live in Ohio. <laughs> oh boy. Um, well, let me see. What 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 else is new? What what oh, I Dave, got? Dave Dave FM is changing to Live 105. They did it today. Okay, let's yeah. explain, let's explain what Live 105 was. That was the station I had my big success at. That was the one that was, you know, 
The I'll station say, most of the people associate with me in San Francisco, although I was on the Quake and I was on KMEL, but that's the one they associate me the most with. And as time has passed, you know, they were a modern rock uh, format or whatever. Uh, as time went on, eventually they decided to get rid of the Live 105 name because the ratings, I guess, were so low they couldn't even see them. Uh, and um, they changed the name of the show to the station to Dave. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Sometimes okay. people do not have good ideas. Okay. <laughs> And they called it Dave, I guess. And it they didn't have any disc jockeys, right? Yeah, they were just playing like Journey and, you know, just really random type of music. And But no disc jockeys. No disc jockeys. So you had to sit there trying to identify the song. I guess so. That's, yeah, it's, it's streaming is all too, right? It's the same as streaming, isn't it? I mean, you know. And then I guess they broke for commercials if anybody bought advertising. So if there were low ratings at Live 105, at the time they changed it, Dave, it must be really low now. <laughs> well, they, so they went, they went, they said, We're going back, we're bringing back live 105. And everybody's writing me, going, They're bringing back live 105. I know. No, they're not. They're just bringing back the name. Yeah. The, well, the music, the music changed. They're, they're playing like Green Day and stuff like that. So, yeah. Fine. Right again. fine. But, you know, but they, have, they have a picture of like four or five people on that yeah. thing. And I'm like, Who the hell are those guys? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You know, nobody called me to do the morning show. You know, it's back live 105. Let's bring it back. Let's get Steve Masters, Rick Stewart, you know, all the original people. But right. no, that's not what they're doing. They're just simply taking the name uh -huh. and attaching it to what they're doing. And the music. They did change the music. Yeah, but, you know, that's very easy to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But not, not the personalities. And that's what made the station. Yeah. But it's and apparently that didn't work too well for them. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, uh, I uh, today I'm how am I uh, today I'm kind of a little tired. I don't know why. Because um, I got I didn't get a lot of sleep on Saturday because I had to get up early. You know, you don't ask old guys to get up at like eight in the morning to go somewhere. It just doesn't work. It isn't a good idea, right? Right, Charlie. Yeah, I had to get up early to take my car in for service. I had to make sure I was done in time to be here. Sure. <laughs> oh, really? So how how early were you up today? I got 7.30. What is 7.30 like? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, we, I should ask Marjorie. Marjorie, what's 7.30 like? It's nice. Wow. It's nice and quiet. And that's that's quiet. quiet. Exactly. Oh, I'm a morning that. person, and I love I'm a the morning. morning. Person. Oh, me too. 4, 4 a.m. Yeah. Ask her why it's nice and quiet to her. Well, number one, you're here with the door closed. Right? Yes, you see, that's the point. I don't hear the I'm snoring. Asleep. I don't what? hear the snoring. You don't hear well, the snoring. I'll never see sunrises if I haven't gone to sleep yet. <laughs> it's nice nice breeze you know in. i could conceivably stay stay up till dawn and then fall asleep because i just it, uh, i'm still alive at two o'clock in the morning uh -huh. you know uh it's strange i've always been a a, a nocturnal person must have been tough doing mornings for you huh yeah. it was it was that's why i uh what i used to do is i did the morning show and then i would go home and about one o'clock in the afternoon, I would take a two hour nap. So mm. I could stay up later at night, you know, like till about 11 and then sleep about six hours. And then I got my full eight that way, you know, mm. but sometimes things would happen at one o'clock in the afternoon and I'd miss my nap. Uh -huh. And then it was playing hell. It was usually some woman I had met. <laughs> and, you know. What time do you wake up in the morning normally for the show? The show started at uh, six o'clock, uh -huh. and I got up at five fifteen. Oh, geez! <laughs> and then I drove the car downtown, and I got there into the station at six. But they were doing the news, and then played some music. Right. And if I was running a little late. I play play an extra song. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I never I never wanted to be there any earlier than I possibly had to. <laughs> you know? Did you ever have a song that uh, was played? that you enjoyed being played right before you started the shift? Never. Okay. Never. I didn't care what they played, you know. 
just as long as it was enough that I could get there in time, you know. And then I, of course, pop on the show and go, hi, everybody. Good morning. Yeah. You know, and they think, oh, he's been there at least an hour preparing this show. <laughs> I still remember the the music you did coming onto the show though. You had the that one song coming on all the time, huh? Like that the was, New Orleans was, type. Um... Yeah, it was. Uh, 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 what's his name? Professor Longhair. Yeah, yeah. It's called Rum and Coke. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I remember that all. And time. it became my theme song because one day I was driving up north, and I was, I'd smoked a couple of joints, <laughs> and I somehow this either came out up on my. Uh, on my CD or something, I was. And it came up from somewhere, and I said, "You know, that's weird enough to be a theme song. Mm -hmm. Nobody <laughs> will forget." Yeah. Okay. I didn't. And and it was just that weird, and I started using it as a theme song, and mm -hmm. used it until you know. I never I never used it at Sirius XM, but I used it for all my time at uh, Library. I remember your letters jingle before you do the the mail in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. Letters. Oh, we get letters. That's it. Letters every day. Please, I, I gotta remember that stuff. I'm gonna forget all this other stuff as I get old, and that thing's right. gonna still be yeah, in my that, head. That will that you will continue to use in your brain. They're gonna play that at my funeral, by the way. Oh, yeah. That's before my time. Huh? Oh yes. Everything oh. was before your time, Marjorie. I the other day. Uh, we uh, we were at this. I'm trying to find something here. Do I have it here? Do I have the letters theme song? Oh, wow. Here, I thought I might have it, but I guess I don't. Jeez. Wait a minute. Here we go. Here, here, oh, was no my, here, here was my letters theme song. I love I it. I not be able to hear it, but this was it that we used in San Francisco. That's not Yeah, it's cutting it out. Yeah. Well, it takes his background music, so it's cutting it out. Yeah, and some of these tracks don't do not somehow go over to Zoom, and I have no idea why. But you got to activate for computer sound. Uh, there's oh, a what? setting. There's a setting. Oh, in where? I'm, uh, in 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 the output within Zoom that you have to do so that when you play computer audio, if you're sharing a video or sharing audio, it'll play for everyone. Oh, okay. Uh, I you take too long on the show, but later. Yeah, I won't do it now, but I'll, yeah. I'll remember that because there's, there's some setting to do <clears throat> play and people can hear. Like you mm -hmm. can probably hear this, you know. Now in its ninth year. Mm -hmm. So you could hear that. So I, I don't know why. But anyway, um, uh, what was I going to say? Where was I going with that? Oh, I didn't know you then. Oh, you didn't know me. Yeah. Oh, so I had to, the other day we, uh, we did this uh, thing. Uh, uh, for Shecky, uh, the Sheck Fest. And um, the, when we were through with it, I came home, Margie said, very nice job, you know, and so on. So yeah, and you I, were amazing. Well, uh, I, I had to follow David Letterman for Christ. <laughs> you know, you, and, you, and that got the biggest laugh, by the way. You, you yeah. want, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, I'll, I'll, I'm waiting to go on. I know I'm supposed to go on at a certain point in the program. And they're running a video thing, and I start to get up to go up there, and and uh, this person who's running it uh, said to me, um, "Oh, well, you, you've got about about uh, what fifteen minutes or something or twelve, yeah. because it's a long clip." And so I sat down, and she says, "You'll go on right after the Letterman clip." <laughs> <laughs> and I sit down, and I'm going, "I've got to follow David Letterman." <laughs> that's you know that's ridiculous uh and but i i went on and i followed david letterman and a lot of people said and i'm i'm not i'm not saying this other people were saying it that i was actually better than dave you were so, so relaxed and so uh, yeah. genuine it was wonderful yeah there, were, there was something wrong with dave there you know mm. it's like I didn't, it didn't calling i think yeah he was calling it in yeah, you know, I and I think you need to in situations like that you would see need to put a little more thought into it, even if you are David Letterman. You know, yeah, he didn't seem doing, very sincere. Yeah, I mean, everybody else, all the other clips were very sincere, yes. very real, and wow. his just seemed to be he was looking for jokes. He was trying yeah. for the joke. Yeah, I think, for, yeah, yeah, like, 
Yeah, looking and for you without, any, without any writers. What are you going to say? No, no, I was just going to say he was pressing for jokes. It seemed like to me. I mean, he was very funny in spots, but then it seemed like some stuff was like sort of a little weird. But yeah, yeah. but you know, uh, I hope nobody gives that guy a talk show. He's not very good. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was just happy that I was able to follow him, and I was able to uh, you know to survive the three and a half minutes that I got. Yeah. It was great. It was, uh, yeah. it, yeah. What happened was they told me I had three minutes and I wrote back and I said, you know, I had 45 years of friendship with this guy. I don't know what I can do in three minutes. I finally figured out a way to do it and you saw it. Um, but I then got a note about a day later going, good news. You've now got three minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so I still stuck to my same game plan of three minutes. And, you know, I think I think maybe I came in at about three minutes. I'd have no idea. I really liked your quote. That it was George Gershwin quote. Oh, was Oscar I don't Levant have to quote. Yeah. Oscar Levant quote. Said, what was it? When George Gershwin died, he said, OK, um, he said um, uh, uh, George died. Gershwin died yesterday, but I don't have to believe it if I don't want to. Yeah. Uh, and I that has always stuck with me over the years because in many cases I've had people die on me and I had to go well I don't have to believe it if I don't want to, you know, and and it's true with anybody you know anybody that as long as they live in your heart they don't die, you know as long as uh, Shecky lived and all the people that were there, okay, uh, he's going to live on. So uh, you know. Uh, and, and I do some of this, it may sound strange. There are certain TV shows he and I both like. And we would compare notes on them when they were on, uh, you know. And uh, now when I watch those shows, I talk to Shecky. You know, how do you like it? Is it good so far? You know, <laughs> I mean, it's like I want to enjoy it with him because I know he would have enjoyed it. I My greatest... Uh, the first thing that I felt when he died was, you know, he's never going to see the final season of Riverdale. <laughs> so, so I've been watching Riverdale once a week and, and telling him to watch with me and saying, okay, here it is, you know, and I watch it the whole hour without turning it off. So I don't, Shecky does, unless Shecky has to go to the bathroom. In which <laughs> What's the movie you never saw? Like yeah. I Psycho. 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 Never saw Psycho. Psycho. Uh, everybody has a story about something. You know, you you know somebody all your life, and then there are things you don't know about them uh, because they share them with other people, but not you. Uh, and the one factoid that somebody brought up that I didn't realize about him is that he loved playing chess. Mm. Right? Which is strange because I always loved playing chess and I would be happy, I'd been happy to play chess with him. But I, he never told me about chess. That's the, so thing, the thing I knew that a lot of people didn't know was that uh, he, uh, one of his quests was to ride every wooden ra roller coaster in America. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't know if he wound up doing every one, but it was close. Uh, and uh, he, um, there were a couple other things about him, little little things that he did uh, that, that people would share with each other, and you wouldn't you wouldn't know it. Uh, I mean, there's a certain fact about Shecky that I brought some people. I won't bring it up here because I don't want to necessarily make it public, but that they didn't know about. Uh, and when I, even my friend uh, Steve Weiner, when I told him, was amazed because he had known Shecky longer than I had and never knew the fact and um and, and 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 you know it was a but it was very nice everybody was a very nice uh afternoon i had great reservations about it i went to it with great fear and trepidation marjorie will tell you i had a what a uh a, a, what do you call it uh what do you call it attack anxiety attack yeah Really? I just, I, well, I just, I was worried that it was going to be terrible and horrible and oh. I was going to not like it, you know, and uh, as it turned out, I thought it was pitch perfect, oh. the whole presentation. And if you watch it, it's on, on, uh, on this uh, 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 Facebook page. If you watch it, 
it, it, you can watch it like a whole TV show because it's yeah. very entertaining from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And you might say so, maybe it's just, it was the last show these people ever produced. You know, the and, Letterman podcast channel put it up on their channel as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's up on my page, and you you, you, yeah. did, you did a link, right? You know. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, and yeah. when you when you pass away, if you pass away before me, I'm not going to believe it, and I'm going to keep calling in and wonder why you're not accepting my call. <laughs> yeah. Every night. Well, listen, when I when I die, there'll be three people there. Okay. Yeah, so, Charlie, me, and Jeff. Are you you and the two who killed you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't want any praises or anything like that or any uh, big get-togethers to mourn my passing, which there won't be. But I don't want it because I would rather be working than have that. You know, everybody's going to go, he was so good. Yeah. So how come you didn't hire me? <laughs> <laughs> don't, get, don't give me all that sympathy after I'm gone. A little sympathy now would be required, you know. The experience of, of uh, giving a eulogy for somebody is uh, I, I had to do that once and it was for a boss that I had and I had very ambivalent feelings about him and I didn't want to do it and somebody uh, um, kind of insisted that I that I would that I did and um, the experience was was that that I felt a whole bunch of things saying what I what I had prepared is that what happened to you or did it just flow. Uh, it uh, pretty well. You see, I had for a good week beforehand played it out in my head what I was going to do and changed it and so on and so forth. You know, I was going to end it with the Oscar Levant quote, and then I decided that I want to do the applause break at the end. That was nice. I like that. And somebody that said to me, "That's a very good yeah. way of you getting applause." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> applause for you. you. You know, but I mean, uh, I and I, I I did that once before for somebody you know, i did two times before in other occasions once for my mother when she died because she had done a radio show right. and said you know she deserves a round of applause and they gave it to her and then my friend steve gruber who did a cable show for like 20 years you know he made he was a member of the friars club even though he wasn't in really in show business <laughs> And I, I said, everybody give a big round of applause for Steve, because I think it's the best accolade you can give somebody that you love, because, I mean, I know what applause feels like, and it's the best feeling in the world, mm -hmm. you know? And so if you're going to do something for somebody, hey, that that says it all, you know? Hey, Alex. Yeah. Um, I know that you had been toying with the idea about highlighting Steve Weiner there, how great was it that Dave set you up for, <laughs> we don't know where Shecky came from. And the first yeah. thing you came out with was. Yeah, I didn't even was, stop. Oh, I, know where know, he came from. I didn't stop to think about that. You know, yeah. as, so as Dave off. was speaking, all I could think about is I got to follow this, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, I did realize that he said, we don't know why we hired Shecky. And then <laughs> I came on and I said, I showed this guy, Steve Weiner. And I said, it's this guy who besides introducing me to Shecky, also lobbied to get Shecky a job at late at the at the uh, at late night. Huh. And uh, so I answered Dave's question, you know, because Dave didn't really care, you know, he didn't care about how he came onto the staff. And, you know, to him, Shecky was a prop, you know, so uh, but it was uh uh, it was a nice occasion. I got to see a lot of people I haven't seen in a long time. And uh, I got to see somebody who I had met only once in San Francisco. And I, he was so close to Shecky that I just had to say hello to him. It was uh, uh, Leonard Malton, mm. who is not looking that good these days, you know. <laughs> he's been ill. I don't know what's wrong with him. Shecky always said he's not well. Mm. uh and uh but uh he, he you know he gave it, it the, the part of his eulogy that that really struck home to me was that he said his daughter who was very close to him okay uh and he always talked about leonard's daughter in fact at one time shecky said leonard tried to fix them up together so they get married oh, he wanted shecky to marry his daughter oh. well his daughter finally got married and about a year and a half ago, I had a kid and Shecky never met the kid. And uh, he uh, 
he mentioned that his daughter, because she, he had never met the kid, was really mad at Shecky for dying. Yeah. And, you know, I thought that was the most human thing anybody said up there, because uh, it, that's the first thought I ever had about Shecky when he died. How dare you? You know, how dare you? How, you, how come you didn't take better care of yourself? You know, there are going to be people here who are going to be really affected by your death and you had to go and die. And I think that's not an uncommon feeling that people have. About. How many people ever here have ever had somebody die on them and felt that way? Yeah. You know? yeah, you see, it's a very common feeling. And that's why I really was so taken back by what, what Leonard said. That was the most genuine thing I think anybody said uh, at that thing. But if you haven't seen it, it's very entertaining. Yeah. Very and it wasn't, it wasn't Marjorie, your, mic, your mic's not on. It was not morose or morbid. It was actually. Oh, it's not morbid. morose or morbid. I wouldn't call it a memorial service. Yeah. Well, they always say. Leonard Moulton has Parkinson's disease. He has Parkinson's. Is that what he has? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, so I went up and I said hello to Leonard. I hadn't seen him in years. You know, I knew how close he was to Shecky and how much he meant to Shecky. In fact, he went on a lot of his cruises with the Maltons. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know. <laughs> But it's it you know it was it, it turned out not, uh, not to be a depressing horrible afternoon. It turned out to be a very decent afternoon, in which again I got to see tons of people I hadn't seen in you know many years. Uh, so that was good. That was good. And uh, if you want to see it, just go down. We're doing our pop up right now, and you're watching our pop up on on facebook just go down did it, or did it just wait a oh wait a minute hold on a it's second. a pretty hold on a second i gotta turn this off i'm gonna turn the audio yeah. on facebook just go down it. the audio it should wait, be wait, on. Oh, hold on it, uh, oh, i'll turn it off there okay anyway uh it uh it's on the facebook page and you just go down below us below us is marjorie and i in the park and then there's the check fest and you click on that and really, you're not going to be bored. I think. I think it's. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, it's a good show. Yeah, very good. It really had people moving on and then them mixing the clips in with the people and all this stuff. It, it was well, really good. You yeah. had people who were very used to for years producing a television show, yeah. and they hadn't had that opportunity in a couple of years. And here they produce this like it was a TV show. And when they edited it. They took all the clips that were on the screen and literally integrated them into the video. So they did a good yeah. job. Yeah. And they, they had Chris Elliott come in. I don't believe they had Chris Elliott's name on there. No. And I was staring at him. He had the beanie and all that stuff. I'm like, wait, is that Chris Elliott, really? And then, yeah, it was him. So that's pretty cool to hear from him because he had been with him for such a long time, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was uh, there very early on. Hello to Vernon Nunn, who is joining us, ladies and gentlemen, from the wonderful state of Kentucky. Yeah, well, <clears throat> our governor uh, won his primary by 92% of the vote. Wow. God. The only place that happened once before is in like Iraq. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Putin got elected with over 90% of the vote, I think. Yeah. 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 I, I'm surprised it wasn't 102%. <laughs> well, these, were just, these were only Democrats participating. So, yeah. And the next day they had 5% of people die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that's not true. That's not true. Yeah. Kentucky's uh, pandemic was handled very well by our governor, as long as as well as the tornado in Western Kentucky. That got kudos as well. Tornado in Western Kentucky? Yeah. Mayfield, Kentucky was destroyed by a tornado a year and a half ago. Wow. Yeah. I just watched a Netflix show about that. Kentucky was yeah, and they've had flooding in Eastern Kentucky, so this guy's had his hands full. Wow. Wow, so uh, it, it, you you you've had some bad weather down there. Well, he was he was elected initially in 2019. Kentucky hmm. is one of those weird states where they elect their governor in an off year. Hmm. So he's running again for re-election this year. <clears throat> in November of this year, he'll he's running for re-election. Governor can succeed himself once, and that's it. Oh, okay, all right. Well, you know, usually incumbents win. It's pretty hard to go up against an incumbent. Uh, so, unless that incumbent's so screwed up, 
you know. <laughs> Well, the Republicans have nominated David Cameron, who's our attorney general and a black Republican. Oh, really? There is such yeah. a thing? Well, in this state, there are. Well, Tim Scott. Look at Tim Scott's no, no chance down in uh, I, South I Carolina. You see, I, yeah. just, I don't know how you could be black, given the politics today, and be a Republican. I mean, isn't it voting against your own self-interest? Well. Yeah. You know? The only way that can happen, in my mind, is that these people are thinking about the Republican Party that used to be, or the Republican Party that they want. Well, the Republican, not, the Republican, not the way party, it is. The Republican Party that freed the slaves. <laughs> yeah, which was Lincoln. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that could be that it's it's people who have yet to forget that the Republican Party has changed. You know, but. Uh, I was I was watching all this news, you know, we don't talk about politics and I say that and then I talk politics to a certain extent. But there was all this news on today about because it's Gay Pride Month. And uh, by the way, I decided no Gay Pride Month, no national uh negro what is it N national black whatever month uh black history month. Couldn't we make them a week? You know, because we're running out of months. Uh, you know, I mean, why can't it be a gay pride week? Did and you see where that federal judge struck down the Tennessee law that outlawed uh, uh, gay demonstrations in right. public? Yeah. But that's exactly yeah. what I was going to talk about. I was watching it and I'm going, to begin with, how does anybody find a drag queen either offensive or uh, bad? They're funny, actually, if you think about it, you know. I mean, they're all kind of outlandish in their in their pre presentation. And then they say, because it's going to hurt the kids. How? Oh. Yeah, how? I can't, I don't understand that. I don't understand the logic in that. Well, I don't want my kid to see a drag queen. Why? Because he might want to wear a dress. Well, I got news for you, pal. Every boy who ever lived at one time or another put on a dress. How many guys here have put on a dress in their lifetime? I don't think so. My, okay. my sister took pictures. Ed Burke was in Racist Fan. Right? I, I, I know Bugs Bunny used to do it. Maybe yeah. It make yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a bunch of actors they show. They show you know, Robin Williams and they show all these actors that dress yeah, you up. You can't show Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, yeah. right. You can't and, show yeah. a Tyler Perry film. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Burl, you go. Flip Wilson, Milton Flip Burl. Wilson, yeah. Oh, Milton Burl. You can't show any yeah. episode of, of, uh, of the uh, Texas, Texaco Star Theater where he came out dressed as a woman. Right. I mean, Rudy, Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Lane, but that's pretty on brand. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, but still, you can't. I mean, you know. I mean, I just. Did you see where. Huh? Did you see where the teachers down in Florida are protesting and resigning in mass because of the, the new law about, uh, you know, you're indoctrinating our kids. And this one math teacher stood up and said, I'm here to teach math. I don't have time to indoctrinate your damn kids and make a day. <laughs> one or one and one or not two. One and one is gay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, to begin with, I find nothing more hilarious than a drag queen. Okay. You know, and they're meant to be. I mean, I'm no, I, I'm, I'm three of my best friends here in New York years ago were all drag queens Jackie Curtis, <laughs> Holly Woodlawn, and uh, Candy Darling. By the way, also the same three drag queens mentioned in Lou Reed's Walk on the Wild Side. Oh, wow. And I knew all of them. And uh, for the most part, they were hilarious, except for Candy Darling. She was very feminine and uh, never, it wasn't like she was doing a parody of women. Mm -hmm. And she'd come into a room and I would kiss her hello. You know, I'd honor that persona that she had created. But uh, they were very funny people. And I saw, so I always associated drag with humor. Uh, divine was divine serious? No, divine was a comedic. Over divine the was great, yeah. Divine was terrific. Um, but you know, I, I, uh, I don't know. 
it's just it, i just don't understand some of the things that are going on now and the, and, the, and what they're saying about them like this is going to hurt they always they always use the children as a shield mm -hmm. okay you know this is going to hurt the children they don't worry about all the guns hurting the children yeah. exactly <laughs> no no you know I never knew of a drag queen that killed a child. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. hey, guess what? Charlene has something she wants to say. <laughs> well, I was going to say, if you don't want your kids to see a drag queen, don't take your kids to see a drag queen. Yeah. Like, what kid going to be walking down the street is going to see a drag queen just... Right, just walking around. That's the same thing about banding books. Mm-hmm. Fuck it, just don't let your child read it if you're so against it. Well, let's it. say it's a very realistic drag queen walking down the street, okay? Then you're not going to know it's a drag queen. Right. You know, although, you know, trouble is, most guys, if you try to make them look like women, look like guys. You know? <laughs> with chest hair. There, with chest there are a couple. I'll tell you, I, years ago, I when I was doing Midnight Blue, we went out to a, 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 a club that was doing a drag show. And this woman came out with this, I'm gonna say woman, we thought was woman. And she did this, just she looked gorgeous, just drop dead gorgeous. And I videotaped her. And anytime I would show that, that, that clip to people, they would go, man, she's hot. Who is she? <laughs> a guy. And then they would go, oh boy. Then they started questioning their own sexuality, you know. Uh, but you know, if it's convincing enough, that's what it is, and you you give them the respect of treating them as such. But want to check something out with Marjorie. Marjorie, wasn't it true that in Philly, when the uh, when we had the Mummers Parade on Broad Street, wasn't it, weren't, weren't there a lot of uh, of uh, men dressing up as women? Yes, yes. I mean, and they were and they were from South Philly, and you would not want to mess with any one of them. They would have killed you. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, okay. Michael, well, it was fine. and Michael, it was fine and it, it was, was fun, fun. Was Mike fun. will appreciate this story that uh, Meryl Marco who was uh, the head writer on the Letterman show in the very early days and responsible for Dave being Dave okay um, she went over to work on the show that Michael Moore was doing I can't remember what it was called now or whatever and she did a piece in which she said I've never considered myself a particularly glamorous woman so I wanted to look like one. So I went to the people who know how to do it best. And she got a bunch of drag queens to do a makeover on her. And when she was through, she looked just like a guy in drag. <laughs> it was an amazing piece. And I always remember that because, you know, I mean, <laughs> drag makeup is not necessarily realistic makeup. It's parody. It's exaggerated. Yeah. 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 I mean, Jackie Curtis used to wear makeup, you know, wear a dress and have a full day's growth, you know, a beard. Uh, you know, there. Yeah. And uh, Holly Woodlawn was this over the top, you know, comedic character. And and uh, the final thing in all of this is that, uh, as I said, I told you about Candy Darling. She was very much a woman. But you know what the truth of the matter is? People thought that guys that dressed up like that were gay. Yeah. And that is not a gay thing. No. No. It, in fact, it's a heterosexual thing. And I'm going to tell you, I mean, I knew Holly Woodlawn and he got laid so much because of who he was and because of his persona that it was ridiculous, you know. But that's why I don't get how, what link do they see between a drag queen and turning gay? Because they don't yeah. understand. I mean, there's some drag queens are gay. Okay. Of course, but yeah, but the, but that's not the point of them, right? The fact is we're, that we're not talking. We're not talking about logic here. They don't, they don't, know, logic. In fact, they don't in, understand what they're talking about, just like they don't understand what woke means. Yeah, I don't even understand what woke means. <laughs> and when somebody told me the definition, I said, "Then what's wrong with being woke?" Yeah. You know what a synonym is? Open-minded. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah if you're anti-woke, anti you're anti-woke, you're, anti you're, anti you're, anti you're, anti you're closed-minded. You know, but when they said, well, I looked up woke, and the, the definition was something that when I read it, I went, okay, I'm woke. 
Who cares? Alert to prejudice and discrimination. That's yes. what it means. Yeah. Alert to prejudice and discrimination. So uh, if you're anti-woke, you're calling yourself a white racist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, God. We live in such a ridiculous time. I mean, this we do. Is, you couldn't. Okay. If I wrote a screenplay about this years ago, everybody would have kicked me out the door saying, hey, that couldn't possibly happen. Yeah. And now it possibly happens. It's happening. So when's, well, your, plane, when's your plane, Mike? It looks like you're stuck there for a while. Yeah, I'm on a four and a half hour layover. But about five minutes after the show ends, we board. So. Oh, okay. So it's, you well, you timed the flight for the show, right? I absolutely did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just one. See, that's the trouble with airports. You can never go to sleep because they. Yeah. The, the, the thing that they do. Yeah, they make it very difficult with the chairs and the handles and all the crap. Yeah, yeah it's difficult. But they have charging, right? Usually they have charging systems, which is good. Yeah, but you know, are they fast chargers? No, <laughs> you know, uh, but you got four and a half hours, so <laughs> yeah, right. what else are you gonna do? Well, no, you don't worry about that, you know, you get, as long as you, you can you plug in right where you are, Mike. I uh moved over to the comfy chairs, actually. Yeah, I have a USB deal, ah, they have it right, right there, there. Right? yeah, yeah. What else do you need? Got the show plug in. Yeah, that's it, baby. Uh, we've helped you with your layover. Yeah, you sure half, did. Four and a half hours just to go to your little pissant town or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, it goes to uh, Vancouver, and then Vancouver flies to my little pissant town. Oh, I see. Well, you're where right now? I'm in Montreal. You're in Montreal. Okay. And then yeah, and then it flies to Vancouver. Vancouver's all the way on the other side of the country. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I see. Okay. Because I, you know, whenever you say like Vancouver, I always think, oh, it's just right up the street here. You know, <laughs> no, it's over across oh. the other side of the country. It's off um, the street from Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what time zone are you in? Pacific. Pacific. See? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so he had to go from New York. I, I bet the leg up to Montreal was shorter than the rest of the trip is going to be, right? Oh, yeah. It was a quick, uh, from New York to Montreal, it was really quick. Yeah. That's why, but, you know, we're time traveling, so I get three hours when we go the other way, right? Yeah, yeah. So why don't you hurry up and do it, and you can come do the show again. I know, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, um, Len, how's your week been? Good. Yeah, we went to a, a Cab Franc wine thing yesterday, which was very nice. A what? C Cabernet Franc. It's a, it's a great. Um, oh. They had a whole thing here in Livermore, and we had a lovely... Uh, Oh, well, well, if we were there, Marjorie would have loved to go with you because anytime there's wine. Yeah. This you know, was posted this on was, Facebook. You can went, we went tasting yeah. in Napa and she practically drove them broke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys come out here. I will show you some really good wines. That's for sure. Well, you see, Marjorie, that's a reason for us to go to California. Right. I had, says if we want to take the Alaskan cruise, he will join us. Is there anybody else out in California who wants to join us? Sure. That's not my first cruise select. That they do have a cruise to... out of San Francisco for they Alaska. Do. Mm -hmm. That is supposed to be one of the best cruises you could possibly ever go on. Am I right, Brian? You've done it. Yeah, I want. I told you my 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 old boss who was Navy background and traveled everywhere in the world. He said Alaska is the most beautiful. Yeah. See, Marjorie. I'm We're there. Going in I'm, August. I'm more of a sun and fun guy, but I would like to see Alaska. You know, we can tell from your face. I'm more of a cruise <laughs> with only 72 cabins. Yeah, I don't know if those cruises. Uh, uh, how big was your cruise, Brian? How many people were on it? Uh, it was. It was. It could hold 5,000, but they only had 3,500. Yeah, they're they're big. <laughs> yeah, Alex, don't you have to on that. Alex, they got the water slide and and laser uh, tag. Get and, it. Get it. Real, 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 real. <laughs> I'll come out to California. I'll see you guys, and then we'll go on the cruise. And Let's do it. Stay home. Let's do it. Oh no, no, Marjorie can stay, and we'll keep her in Napa till we come back. How's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. can stay here in Livermore. We got about sixty wires. Right. We'll keep it. Yeah, yeah. Five yeah. thousand nice cabins on the cruise. Forget it. Not well, five thousand cabins. You can have five thousand. I don't think any of the any any of the long. I don't think any of the long boats, Marjorie, go up there. 
if I'm mis not mistaken. Am I mistaken? I don't want to go right? there. No, they must have smaller smaller boats like you were talking about the other night, probably mm -hmm. out of Seattle. So they probably have the smaller ones. We could just fly up to Seattle. I'll meet you in Seattle. Yeah, and Vancouver. Vancouver is uh, the ship we're going out of Vancouver in August is only 3,000 passengers. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe I took the one out of Vancouver too. Did, have you taken that cruise at all ever? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised I've only done it once because it goes out of Vancouver. It's so easy to, to jump on. And is it it's a smaller beautiful. boat? Is it a smaller boat? I thought when I went, it was the Norwegian Sea and it was like 3,500 people. That's oh, what yeah. I thought it was. <laughs> Marjorie doesn't want that. I will do the research. I will do the research and we'll drop off Marjorie in Napa and we'll just say, just keep her here. We'll pick her up at the same spot in a week. It's you and me, and then maybe maybe Mike can join us, and then Len wants Aaron to join Ford. us. And if anyone, let's, wants let's to start with the Europeans and just us. Yeah, we, we can do that too. There you we'll go. Start you'll, with be, that. you'll be sick of each other, and then you'll want to go to here's me separate. <laughs> <laughs> but we're planning on taking a lot of time for vacations coming up, and yeah. uh, uh, there might get be a point where we're tired of being with each other. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I got to go. I got to get my little monster from school. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean little Adrian? Yeah. Yeah. See you, Brian. Bye. Okay. Love Love you. By the way, Mandy waved goodbye. Did you notice that? Yeah. <laughs> Was she smiling? I, I'll look back at the. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now it's. Okay, bye. <laughs> See you, Brian. See you later. And say hello to Adrian for us. He's got the greatest daughter. I mean, yeah. she comes onto the show that we do on, at She's night. She's great. She is just, she's, you know, she's precocious. Just yeah. Precocious. He's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. What happened to Andy, Andrew Deutsch? We lost him. Yeah, he, he had to leave, I guess. He had to leave. Oh. Well, you know, it's a casual show, so you can come and go as you please. Uh, but and he has a lot of work to do, too, I know. Uh, yeah. Charlie, how's everything down in Texas, you know? Where? Huh? Yeah. Well, wow. yeah, I'm rained out again tonight. Been wow. raining all day. Really? Do da do da. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's it's terrific. You know. Can't make any money. Yeah, what I heard, rained what, out. What I've heard lately about Texas, your governor did something wrong. Oh, he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know. There's uh, a thing in the Times today about what he's doing in texas about managing the small cities and towns yeah they're taking over houston they want houston to be able to govern itself they don't want houston to be able to govern itself yeah. I thought the idea of having a city was that you governed yourself but he's okay. doing that with a lot of cities and towns in texas he's passing laws where the towns can't do things like they can't up the minimum wage on their own they can't you know, pass anti-discrimination laws in their town and all that. He's making that the state's overruling everything. I don't, hmm. you know, I don't understand any of this. It just doesn't. They make tried sense. that in Michigan, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, but I, they it, tried that in Michigan. And they got a backlash, so the Democrats now control all of Michigan. Okay. Well, the fingers thing, crossed. The thing why it doesn't make sense to me. So I always thought the Republicans were all for America and freedom and freedom, and all yeah. that. And limited yet, government and limited government. Right. Yeah, but that doesn't include taking your vote away. And limited voting yeah. and limited who can vote I mean, the, and where the, you can live. Yeah, the limited stuff that they're going after is stuff that just strips America of being America. Of everything. Yeah. And they, one of the laws they pass is if they don't like the way Houston votes, they can just throw the vote away. Just yeah. count completely. Yeah. Secretary of State I, can rule. What I found out, there was an actress by the name of Lillian Gish. Now, you may not know who she was. I think probably Paula knows. And she was a silent film. She was a silent film. Yeah, well, she made it into sound film. She was like in Night yeah. of the uh, Night of the uh, Hunter uh, film with Charles Lawton directed in the later years in the 50s. She was around for a long time and she kept appearing in films and TV shows and stuff over the years. And she was always a favorite of especially silent film people because she was the heroine, one of the heroines, she and her sister, Dorothy Gish, of uh, uh, Birth of a Nation. So she goes wow. back to that, that far in film. And, uh, I, and my friend Steve, who I saw this weekend, 
loved her, said she, oh, she's such a wonderful woman. I said, we're just watching this documentary by, um, what's his name? The guy that does all the documentaries. Uh, Ken Burns? Ken Burns. Ken Burns, yeah. On the Holocaust, the U.S. and the Holocaust. And one of the things they bring up is that Lillian Gish was against the Jews being allowed to come into the United States. Really? And I mentioned it. I, to, I mentioned to Stephen and his sincere desire to have a fond memory of her says, well, I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how can you not care? This woman was an anti-Semite. You know. Well, you win some, you lose some. Well, yeah. Hollywood was oh, controlled, controlled by the Jews at that time, so I don't know how she got a job. Well, I mean, yeah. she, she didn't get many jobs, oddly enough, you know, <laughs> and probably because it was controlled by the Jews. Anyway, <laughs> they let her work. They just didn't let her say anything. Oh, I love some. I can't remember who said it once, but they said, uh, gee, if Hollywood is controlled by the Jews, how come Tom Cruise is a star? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not. I think it might have actually been Richard Belzer who said that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and, and it's true. I mean, if Hollywood was, was was controlled by the Jews, why am I not a big star? You know, uh, I guess radio wasn't controlled by the Jews. I guess that was it. Um, although my my first boss here in New York was Jewish, Strauss. And uh, let me see here. Any of my other? Well, I worked at ABC. Who knows what they were? You know, but, Stern's Jewish, right? Huh. Stern's yeah, Jewish, right? Stern is Jewish. Yeah, he's my Maybe son. that's the secret. Maybe the secret is having Jewish DJs. He's, he's my bastard son, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> I often wonder about that, you know, because he could be about the age of my uh, my uh, <laughs> son. Well, whatever that was, you know. So, but anyway, so uh, you know, it's been a. Uh, you know, I'm oh, I'm always exhausted these days. I don't know why. Is it because I don't go out, Marjorie? Yes. Well, I had I walked yesterday. Allergies, allergies drain you. Oh man, I'm telling you, it is terrible here. I wake it's up. It's grass I'm right now. Breathing. It's and grass. It, then a thing comes on my watch. It goes, oh, there's a there's a a, a bad air alert for Harlem. You know. So, uh, and it goes until what? Tomorrow night at midnight. So, you know, it's tough. better than the gunshots. Better than a gunshot. Yeah, well, these I are know. our options. <laughs> Everything is better than a gunshot, Mario. Yeah. It's What's true, though. I cut through Central Park twice while I was in New York, and yeah. both times I started sneezing like crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what we're, and we live yeah. literally in the shadow of Central Park here. There we go. Uh, I walk. We walk down to Central Park all the time, you know. That's why it's good to breathe through your nose. Yeah, well, that's it's a reason not to go into Central Park, you know, this time of the year. Was Central Park where you two were yesterday? No, no. We're, we're more. That was a different park. park. You know what's, what's amazing park. about New York is every neighborhood has a park. You know, this little oasis of grass and trees and flowers and stuff, bigger and than tables. others. Morningside Park's pretty big. It, it, it has a huge footprint lying underneath uh, Columbia, Columbia University. University. Yeah. So it's a very big park with its own little pond and everything like that. You know, and then we go down to the Mere sometimes, and that's almost a huge lake, man made lake. Uh, and we go down to watch the geese raising their young. We had the, the geese turtles raising fucking. their young yesterday, but. <laughs> The turtles yeah. fucking Alex. Fucking. Yeah, they're always out there on a rock. Two of them. One fucking. The other. Is, is that the way they have sex? Or are they just resting with each other? I think they're fucking. <laughs> One of your favorite pictures you took was of two of them on a rock. Uh, yeah, uh, but they're they're you know so it's it's really you know it's wonderful to have all these parks. And we have Morningside Park. We have the other. What's the other park we have up the up the street over here, named after somebody? Uh, and uh, then we have the Mirror. Of the and then we park. have that park where they have the outdoor jazz and stuff. Well, that's what I'm saying. That, that oh, I can't remember. whatever that park is called. Yeah, <laughs> but it you know it's really it's really, that's what's there's a lot of parks. Here, you know, uh, and uh, it's great to have these parks. 
Is well, the mirror a separate park or is it part of Central Park? The mirror is a part of Central Park. It's the very top, if you look at a map of Central Park. It's Central Park North. And the, it's a north, the northeast corner. There's this lake and that's called the Harlem Mirror. And it's so wonderful. We love it over there. We, and we, I, I, I got to do some pictures of some geese taking their young out for a swim. You know, and I just love the way they line up behind the mother and the dads. I can always tell it's a dad on the end. I don't know. He's at the know. end. Yeah. And he, he's he's like bobbing his head, like, keep going. And mom is like leading them. And then they all get out of the water and they still haven't gotten their full fur or wings or feathers. Feathers. It's all like, fu they're all really fuzzy, you know. Hey, listen, this has been nice. Uh, we got uh, we got Mike here. Mike's waiting. <laughs> He's in love, everybody. Great seeing you too. It was really nice seeing you yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, nice seeing you too. And and um, uh, next time you're down here, you should come up here and go to the Harlem Mirror with us. Yeah. Love to. <laughs> and Marjorie, what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> Delivery. It's I a wanna, surprise dinner. You can't remember what you defrosted, <laughs> huh? It's, it's a surprise. <laughs> a surprise. Yeah, every dinner is a surprise with her. Uh, Charlene, thank you. Always nice to have you here, Charlene. Uh, and uh, Charlie Wallace, uh, great to see you. Sorry for Texas. Uh, uh, of course, we got to thank uh, Len LaFrisco for being here. And uh, uh, what's his name? Who was here earlier? Um, Andrew, uh, Andrew Deutsch. Andrew Deutsch. Uh, Paul Levin, our old friend uh, living up there and with her bad knee up in... Uh, <laughs> It's a new knee. Good, it's a good, good knee. knee. Good, yeah. knee. good new knee. Yeah, well, you know, I, I keep wondering, like, maybe if I have to get something replaced, do I get it replaced or I just say I only got a couple of years to go anyway? Why waste my time? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I mean, it'd be a shame to get a new hip, which I don't need, but a shame to get a new hip and then have to, you know, go ahead and, and die after just getting the new hip. You want to have time to use it and Travel. Well, that's my intention. I know it's your intention. <laughs> I'm just mentioning it. I hope your knee lasts years and years and years. Well, okay. I'm sure it'll outlast me. How about that? I told, <laughs> I told Shecky, I said, I hope uh, uh, I hope I live long enough that when I die, you're going to do my eulogy at the, at the funeral. And he said he would, and he lied to me. So, Aww. yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, whoever thought? You know, it's like, you know, I, I just quickly add, add a little time to the show. I don't care. Who cares? You know, <laughs> it's strange, but it's kind of like you have, a, they say parents. It's very sad when a parent loses a, a child because they don't expect to outlive the child. Yeah. And and that's exactly the way I felt about Shecky. I was supposed to, out, he was supposed to outlive me. Okay. And he didn't. Who knows? Who You, you can never you can go figure. Um, Alex, that's life. Oh, yeah? Is that the way you write it off? That's life? Well, okay. I'm surprised how close I felt with him, even after just two years of knowing him from this show. Because he yeah. was here every week. Yeah. yeah. Got to yeah. know him. You know, we're kind of a little family here. It's, it's true. You know? You know, um, we, had, we had some uh, discussions, you know, via text or whatever. And I mean, he was just a, a wonderful man. And, I'm, and I do miss him. You know? Yeah, and 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 you know you're just another square in this in this right right yeah. yeah thank you very much Mandy good to see you uh, yeah nice I'm to watch nice. the uh, I have not I didn't have the link so I'm gonna watch the yeah the tonight just go on to the good, on, on my Facebook page and then you double click yeah you know. I saw the posted so I was glad y'all did that yeah. You double click Andrew. on the picture. It doesn't have a doesn't have like a arrow or anything, but do it. You know, okay. and I think you'll enjoy it. I mean, it's a fun, yeah, yeah. Really enjoyable thing when we watched it. Marjorie's watched it twice. You know, and finally, Vernon Nunn. Always a pleasure to have you here, Vernon. Uh, uh, and finally, to say goodbye to all of us. Oops, wait a minute. <laughs> to say goodbye to all of us, ladies and gentlemen. It's Edward Berger who says, oh, what? Uh, what? Turn your mic on. Your mic, mic is off. My mic is off?
No, he's oh, no. He's no, it's not. But... No, oh, it's no. Not. no, it's not. Oh, no, no, Edwards. Edwards is off. Oh, Edwards is off. Yeah. Yeah. Edwards. We can't hear you, Edward. <laughs> he doesn't know what happened, he said. <laughs> well, we can't leave until he get manages to get his. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, we're going to have to sit here Unplug for Unplug your headset. Edward? Unplug your headset. All right. Just move your mouth and... and Say the closing. Move your mouth. That's all, folks. Okay. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Ah, there. Now it's working. Oh, okay. Good. 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 All right. That's all, folks. Yeah. Okay. Bye. bye. bye.